Hey guys, maybe you're looking to get into ESL, that is teaching English as a foreign language or as a second language. Maybe you're looking to travel, go abroad, and teach English while you're doing it. But how do you find a job? How do you get a job? How do you apply? That's what I want to go over today. I'll show you two or three ways that you can start looking for your English teaching job so you can see the world. Let's go. Hey there, English teachers and future English teachers. Jesse here from Sweet Academy, and I want to help you get into the classroom today. And we're going to do that. I'm going to take you through a couple popular websites to look for ESL jobs. I'm also going to show you some things to be, be aware of and to look out for. So I'm going to go through some warnings with you, what to look for, different options that you'll probably see as you're looking for jobs, and uh, just give you a basic strategy to prepare to start looking for an ESL job. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you another more direct way that you can uh, find out if there are jobs available where you want to go. So let's get into the website. I'm going to turn you around and show you my computer so we can look together. So I'm going to take you through two different options that you could take to look for jobs. The first option is the one that I took. It's the one that I did. So I'm going to give you two ways. One is how I did it, how I went to Korea. So if you're looking for jobs in China or Korea, this is a good place. And the other option is if you'd like to teach other places or you want to check out different countries, you can get a more a broader search and a more balanced search. So this is Dave's ESL Cafe. You can just go to eslcafe.com and then go on jobs. This is the Korean job board. That's the one we'll be looking at, the China job board and the international job board. Uh, let's just go in here to see what's in here. The international job board has jobs, I guess, in Uzbekistan and Saudi Arabia. That probably is good money, but I'm sure that they'll have higher requirements than other jobs. So a degree required in English, literature, linguistics, any sorts of these. So that's off to a start. Minimum of three years ESL teaching, preferably at the college or university level. Their standards in the Middle East are usually pretty high because they pay pretty well for, the, for this field, right? For this type of job. But we have a few in Europe. So this is what the international job board looks like. But let's go to the Korean one because this is where I went, because I was sure that I wanted to go to Korea. So really, the main thing I would probably be looking for in a job board like this, I don't know that I'd go to this one. It just looks too desperate, too busy, too much. But uh, Busan, that's the second largest city in Korea. That's where I spent seven years, and it was it was a good place. I liked it. It was, I mean... It was unique, that's for sure. So if you're looking for quite the change from maybe like in America or Canada, Busan's a good place. Seoul is obviously the capital. It's the largest city. So um, it's going to have more of a city feel, more of an international feel. Busan is more, it's older. And it was the only city, it was the only part of, of Korea that wasn't destroyed in the war, the the North came down and just before it conquered Busan, and that's when the U.S. and other forces came and pushed them back up to where the line currently is. So that's Busan. Uh, Changwon is a pretty small city, but I mean, if you're looking for an experience, a small city might not be a bad option because. You'll meet a lot of locals. You will get a feel for a small city in Korea or a smaller town. So most of these jobs are going to pay around 2, 2.95. That will probably have some higher requirements. Um, let's take a look. 
qualifications, being native speaker. This, I don't know how flexible they would be on relevant majors. So always give it a shot if you're, um, if you're curious, but they obviously prefer you to have a certificate of some sort. And this is where you'd get your conditions, right? 22.5 to 25 teaching hours a week. Most of the time, you'll probably get your maximum hours. So bank on that. Don't look at, it's only 22.5 hours a week. It'll probably be closer to 25. Just because they're paying you, they'll want to get their money's worth, right? Here's a good one to look out for. No split shifts. That's really good. A split shift would be if they have morning hours, if you'd have like, let's say nine o'clock to 12 o'clock or six o'clock, well, maybe not six, like seven o'clock to 10 o'clock. And then you'd have like a four hour break or so kind of similar to like a Spanish type of timetable. And then you'd come back in the evenings and teach maybe adults after their business hours, right? Or kids after school. So that's what a split shift is. Work morning hours and then have a big break in the midday and then go back in the evening. I never wanted that personally, but I did know people that did want it because it fit their schedule and they said that they could get privates during the break and and that's when they could have their free time. So they liked it. I knew people that did split shift and they loved it. So that's a personality thing. So this looks pretty standard, right? 500,000 in one month. That's around 500. Well, it was around 500. I don't know if it's more or less now, but we'll just say 500 US dollars for housing allowance. That's pretty standard. Um, 20,001 for overtime. Uh, you probably won't be doing overtime and no Saturday classes. Some academies will have Saturday classes, but typically if there are Saturday classes, they'll pay you more. But always make sure that all of this is in your contract and you, and you ask if you have any questions like these. So this looks pretty standard. This looks like a good deal. So just things to keep in mind, probably typical salary will be around 2.2 to 2.5 million starting, uh, and then work up from there. So if you see anything a lot lower than that, then stay away from it. If you see anything a lot higher than that, then stay away from it. Typically, if something is too good to be true or it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. But it, if you'll see most of these will, this is a university job, it might be a little different. It has a higher starting salary, but you're going to have to work your way up to a university job if that's what you want. They usually require more certification and they require more experience. But let's check. You're going to be looking mostly, if you're starting out, you're going to be looking mostly for hogwans or academies or like this, a recruiting office. So that's how I got connected with my first school, with my first Hagwon, my first English academy, because the academies will pay them to find teachers for them. So they're hired by academies and schools all over the country. It's an agency. So they just connect teachers and students. But um, they're pretty standard. And you'll just have to decide where you want to live. Uh, I didn't know much. So I originally applied for Seoul because that was the only city in Korea that I knew of. And the recruiter found me a job in Busan. And I mean, I didn't know the difference. And I said, uh, what's Busan? And she said, it's the second largest city. And it's really the competition's high in Seoul, this and that. So uh, you may not get exactly what you want, but I always say that if I had gone to Seoul in the beginning, I probably would have only stayed a year anyway, because Seoul is a big city. And I, was, I wasn't from a city. I was from a town. And from the town to the big city of Seoul, I, it would have probably been too much of a change. So even if you don't get what you want, who knows? It could turn out for the best. If you have any questions or you need any more explanation or you have any concerns about finding a job, 
you can always just let me know on Twitter, Facebook, or here in the comments. Just reach out to me. I'm not hard to find if you're already in this program. But now let's take a look at other countries. So now we're looking at TEFL jobs in Spain, and you can just decide where you want to go. Let's say you want to live in Germany, right? TEFL jobs in Germany. This would be a good uh, article to read if you're interested in teaching in Germany. But just to give you an idea, that's all. I imagine you want to teach in France. So that's where I would start. Decide where you want to live or narrow it down to like two countries or three countries and figure out what the place is for you or where you want to take your next step. We're going to take here the ESL base and we're going to take a look at some of these jobs and see what they have. TEFL or TESOL, teaching English as a foreign language or teaching English to students of other languages. That's what those mean if you care. Uh, teachers required in Spanish schools. Here's the thing. In Korea, in most places, a certificate is uh, encouraged. It's preferred, but it's not mandatory, right? So a minimum of a bachelor's degree in any field, that's typical. Excellent English language skills. If you're native, then they'll take it. And a one-year commitment. That's normal. Now, it doesn't say anything about here, and, include, and in fact says the opposite. No teaching experience required, right? No certification required. But in Europe, it is required in most places. They will ask, and they'll, they'll need it because there is a lot of competition, and it's a good thing to have, right? So that's the first thing difference to notice. So here's the job description, TEFL or TESOL certified. I'm CELTA certified, so that works too, most likely, because CELTA is usually more powerful. Uh, another thing to note, you remember the, the salary in Korea, plus they pay for your housing in Europe, especially in Spain, it's a lot lower right? Still 20 to 25 hours. Again, you'll be making, you'll be working probably the maximum closer to the maximum, but what they pay is a lot lower. So this is about average, like a thousand, a thousand dollars. You know, it's probably fewer dollars now. Another thing in Korea, you'll get paid probably year round and then maybe even an extra month the way it works out. In Spain, most places will only pay nine months. So all of this is to be considered and to be expected. So when you decide, make sure you ask those types of things. Make sure you look and research those types of things. Are you paid for only nine months out of the year? Uh, what is the starting salary? What is, what is the typical starting salary? If it's all the same, except for the pay and the conditions, what they offer is a lot worse or a lot better, stay away. Stay in this range, more or less. Right. So those are those options. And I hope that those serve you well. And really check those out. They're very useful, depending on where you want to go. If there is a place that you know you want to go, for example, I live in Seville, Spain. Then another option is to go directly in a teacher's group. Many places have a group of teachers. I know that the teachers here, let me turn you around again. Here is a TEFL Teachers in Seville Facebook group. So you could go to any Facebook group, type in TEFL Teachers in some city and see if there's a Facebook group there. And if there is, then there are job listings here. A lot of people share, like academies share their job openings here, uh, part-time or full-time, and, well, they sell stuff too. And also, there's a lot of material and, and private jobs. But this is an option, so you could go in and say, you know, I've seen people do it a lot. Hi, I'm Jesse, and I'm interested in teaching English in Seville. Do you know of any job openings that are available or will be available soon? And then maybe someone will tag an academy or tag a friend or tag somebody or offer you some help. 
teachers are very helpful in there because we've all kind of been in the same boat. So in Facebook groups, teachers are helpful. And if you want to go the other route, find job recruiters, talk to academies or schools directly. And if you do have any questions based on what you hear or see, then I'm always available. Let me know in the comments here or on Twitter or Facebook, you can contact me as well. I look forward to hearing from you and I'll be happy to help you. So keep teaching and keep learning. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.